Welcome to Thrones and Scones. It is your weekday morning podcast where we uh, chit chat a little bit about Game of Thrones over, well, over some breakfast, of course, and we only eat pastries here on the show. Today, we're tackling season five, episode one, The Wars to Come, and chocolate chip. <laughs> you know it. So, I got it. No, I got I got the uh, I got the wiki up. I've got the plot right here. It is of a medium length, kind of on the shorter side, but at this point it's an essay compared to what we've been dealing with. So, y'all ready for this? Go. You uh you want anything in particular? Ooh. I, I, I every time I why do why am I unprepared for this? <laughs> uh Spanish soap opera? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Spanish soap opera. <laughs> Cersei <laughs> and Jamie are just to a world without Tywin. No. See. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is. Revi- That's French. <laughs> 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 Uh, that is uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you do sexy Spanish? I had it. I had it. <laughs> I don't think it's. I don't think it's Paris. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see. All right. My sexy Spanish accent. You raped her. <laughs> you murdered her. You killed her children. Paris. <laughs> Paris. He there revealed. You. A conspiracy to Tyrion. <laughs> oh, Danny faces a new threat <laughs> to her rule. You know what? This Spanish guy is in love with the French person. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, just just go back. Just go back just and do a full, it. full blown French at this point. <laughs> Very, <laughs> Jean is caught between a two kings. <laughs> God. Oh. Very short. Took a couple of minutes to get through. <laughs> I'm starting to think Worth we started it. doing these plots so that people would be, you know, less confused <laughs> about this podcast. <laughs> and I don't think we followed through on that promise. I oh. <laughs> just like how you go. How do you do spe- sexy Spanish? And you go, "Hey, is Veris?" <laughs> It's my only Spanish accent. <laughs> if I'm talking in Spanish, it comes a little bit better. But if I'm not, it's all I have is that. <laughs> you want the veris? <laughs> to go to, to the pentos? <laughs> it's rough, man. It's rough. <laughs> Keith Urban? Oh, wait, no, that's a different accent. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm done. We're hitting the episode here, season five, episode one, or as I like to call it, the reason that episode tens are more often than not a little less exciting and a little more setup-y, because when they're not, this happens. This happens, yeah, exactly. Where I-, I was like going through this episode, paying very close attention, and I was like, I haven't written anything down in a while, and then I rewound a little bit, and I was like, but I don't want to... There's nothing. <laughs> nothing happens in this episode. No. And what? So even the beginning of the episode is weird, right? They started off with Cersei as uh, Cersei as a little girl and going in the woods, meeting a witch, which is then it's like, wh- I don't know. I don't even really know what the point of that scene was, to be honest. It's an odd inclusion. Um, so Cersei... In the books, this is a big part of her story, okay. is this prophecy that this witch... Is it, is her name like Mag or something? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that this witch gives her. It's a big thing. I think it comes to play earlier than this, and it's in her mind all, all the of the time. Yep. And and we hear about it constantly. Kind of like Ned with with this little promise me Ned phrase that Liana... It's it, Liana's last words to him. Um, it's in his mind all of the time. And obviously, they can't include her mental status necessarily, what's going through her her little uh, noggin. So it makes sense that we haven't heard of this, but the fact that they chose to include it uh, did seem a little odd, especially, you know, it's it's the first thing we've seen 
in roughly a year, you know, if you were watching this as normal, it is a little strange. And also they seem to kind of play into the little Cersei being, you know, um, Cersei has a lot of like bisexual nature in the books. Mm. Um, she's got these these dips with these ladies throughout uh, throughout the whole thing, really. Um, and this girl is like the first one of that. And they kind of allude to it a little bit in this scene. It's very minor. But again, the fact that they include that, I think is more just a nod than anything. But it, it was odd. What yeah. did you think about this scene overall? The witch scene? Yeah. I just I just felt like it was completely pointless in the sense I thought it was the scene itself was fine. I just thought it didn't really make much sense because a lot of the stuff that the witch was saying has already happened. So then at, at that point I'm kind of like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess she was told about this and we didn't really know about it. So they didn't use this for any significant foreshadowing. Cause a lot of the stuff they already had said already, ha- already happened. Right. Yeah. And I just, it just now, felt like a weird time to put it in too. Now there is Jeremy in the books. There's one more part to this prophecy. You know what that is? Yeah, I was just trying to remember that because I don't recall. So it's it's this word, and I don't I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never known. I think it's like Valencar or something. It's V A L O N Q A R, mm-hmm. and it's High Valyrian for little brother, and it's it's used in this prophecy to say that like. I don't remember if it's like, will be your undoing or will be the death of you or something, but to imply that your little brother is going to be your cause. And there is obviously the the Tyrion angle, but a lot of conspiracy theories about that it will actually be uh, Jamie. I don't know if she was like the firstborn of the twins or something, but... Yeah, when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands around your pale white throat, choke the life from you. Be interested to see. They did not include that, see, that very would, notably. That would have been cooler. Like, I would have liked some more context to the scene to maybe... Imp- it would have made more sense to me if they had, you know, had her give this prophecy, which we already know a lot of it's come true, and then she says mm-hmm. something pretty bold where you're like, oh, shit, well, then that's probably going to come, come true. true. And yeah. it would have been cool to have something like that that was more a little more mysterious that we don't know why or how, but we probably know it's going to happen. Um that would have been cooler. This was a little yeah. this was a little underwhelming for me and it just kind of seemed out of place. I didn't I didn't mind it actually. I don't you we could always we could have a conversation of having it much earlier in the season just to get a mindset for Cersei, but I think it's interesting they're bringing it up now because we've only lost one child, right? Sure. Well, yeah. So you you know, True. you have the paranoia building now, right? Yeah. You'll see that in this season. Um of kind of like oh my gosh, is this, is this how it's going to be? Am I, am I going to lose all my children? Because that's kind of been her thing in the last season has been, well, family, 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 and not even family, my children, my children are critical to me. Yeah. That's that's a good point. I mean, Tom is such like a B character though. No, (laughs) I don't, I don't really, I don't know. How dare you? Yeah. He's kind of a whiny bitch. Well, I mean, he, he plays second fiddle to Sir Pounce. Yes, yeah, Sir mm-hmm. Pounce. When, when Sir Pounce yeah. is on screen, get out the way. Yeah, if the witch would have said something about Sir Pounce, then then we then it would have been a scene. <laughs> my worst my, my biggest note about this scene, and it's more of a of something I want to address in all works of fiction, nonfiction, whatever. In any show, movie, book. If somebody needs to provide a little bit of blood, they always take it from their palm or one of their fingers, which is like, it has the most nerve endings on yeah. your, like, slice so somewhere else. That's, I, I, we, Jen and I, as this was happening, had this exact conversation. And I said the same thing. I'm like, why, in the, why do they always do it from the, I was, I was surprised she didn't do the straight palm, which is like always what they do. Just like right down the palm like that's That's the absolute worst place to cut, right? Because yeah, that's, yeah. and after you cut that, then you have this cut there and then your hands and fingertips are what you use to do things. Everything, yeah. Yeah, Everything, so then, yeah. I mean, it, they teach us this like 
in like first grade, right? When when you have like the little fire drills and that when you go to touch the hot door handle, oh. <laughs> you use the back of your hand because if it's hot, it burns the back of your hand and not your freaking palm. So yep. apparently they don't they don't teach that in first grade in Westeros. <laughs> so kids listen up. If some witch ever demands a small sample of blood from you, here's what you do. You take the knife, you hold it firm, you get in probably a good inch, inch and a half, and you just draw like a six inch line vertically down your wrist. <laughs> and then <laughs> That'll provide you'll plenty bleed. of blood. You'll bleed you gush, tons then. Right? I'm, and you, I, you'll be fine. Alternatively, uh, you get yourself a leech. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you put it on for a few seconds. You kill yeah. it. There's blood you, everywhere. And specifically in the You have to be in incredibly crotchal, aroused. In the crotchal yeah. region. <laughs> Throw that in a brazier <laughs> and watch kings drop like flies. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, again, I don't know to what. We we get to see Tyrion. He survived his trip on a boat and wound up in Pentos. Um, this is, I mean, the same place that Danny and Viserys started, which mm-hmm. I guess is a nice little uh, cyclical thing here. We don't see them there very long. Just long enough for Tyrion to drink some wine he wasn't invited to and throw up on a carpet that wasn't his. Um, I get the importance of the arc. I like the payoff. And I don't think from a character development standpoint that it's bad. I think it has to happen. I think it's good. Blah, blah, blah. But I hate watching drunk, mopey Tyrion. Yeah. yeah. It sucks. It's just no fun. <laughs> right. And it, and it I, drags on. It's, it, oh, for so long. Yeah. It, 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 you don't get... I don't feel like you get enough. It's like clearly he's going to have to go and do something... You know, and the fact that does he really feel that bad that he had to kill his father? I mean, no, I, I don't think it was necessarily that at all. You think uh, it's Shay loss of Shay? I think it's Shay. Yeah. I think it's the whole situation and yeah. being away from everything. Um, it seems surprising yeah, how just lost how Varys is just like, yep. Um, I realized that this was this was my best move. I knew that I was going to get caught, so I'm just coming along, and now we're going to go. I mean, he is one of those people who has been as meticulous as Littlefinger has been uh, the last several seasons. So it just seems like in helping him escape at the end of last season, it, he, you would have thought that he would have had other other plans to prevent just this thing that where he had to get on the ship. Well, I don't think he was planning to until the whole Tywin thing happened and made him late. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think... I think that's a good point. Ferris is probably also the type of dude to have like plan A through Z in place. So I'm sure yeah. it was like coming to terms with the fact that he was going to leave, but then him absolutely having a, a strategy of what was next. Right. He's like, oh, okay, we got we to gotta go and dig up this one <laughs> satchel. It has the instructions. We'll follow them to the letter and uh, we'll be king in no time. You, you know, know, back in King's Landing with, you know, Tywin's, uh, burial or whatever in there with, with Cersei. Were you surprised that Jamie didn't show up? You know, little 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 mood stimulator. You know, a dead family member. You know how he rolls. That's true. Uh, we did not get another. We get another rapey rape. thing. <laughs> so yeah. it's almost like they decided that that was a bad idea, bad idea? or something. Hmm. Yeah, he does make a different turn in his character, deciding that okay, maybe. Maybe it is all about Cersei now, mm-hmm. and making uh, making pretty bold claims um, that you know he he's he's wanting to do something. Cersei firing back that <laughs> at least Tyrion killed our father on purpose. <laughs> that's a uh, that's got to be a fight that you don't just sleep through. So that's rough. Yeah, and I I do want to hit on a little bit of a Jamie Cersei question real quick for you nerds uh, in the books. Does I can't remember if we talked about this already. Does in the books does Jamie uh, give Cersei the old rape? I don't rem. I don't remember that. I think so. I don't remember that scene where they're sleeping together in in the actual room with the body, though. I think I do. No. Uh, I just read book three. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's been so long. I couldn't mm. tell you. I'm sorry. <sighs> I do remember in the books that Tywin's funeral is a mess. Uh, like, he apparently does not decay well. 
he his skin gets all taut and like just from the nature of his wounds and everything he smells he reeks like Tommen throws up at the funeral uh it's a it's just a fucking terrible gory end cap to this dude's life um that obviously would have been a little weird to include but i kind of like the uh fall from grace as it were arc continuing yeah that's that's kind of funny yes yeah, uh but other I, like i was thinking about this episode too and there's just not a lot if i had I, i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go all right jump to my best part Please Just tell you what I think my best part is, uh, and if I have to, if I have to pick someone, I think I like I do like the part where, you know, Mance is standing up and not going to bend the knee, and then uh, they end up uh, he ends up going to the spire or whatever you want to call it, and he, he's going to be burned alive, right? And then uh, uh, John kind of puts him out of his misery or whatever. No, I thought, he, I, th- I thought that whole scene was pretty good. It doesn't say anything. Everything from our review said that it was such a change. Like even, even uh, Martin wasn't av- uh, aware of this plan from the scriptwriters to change from the book. So no rape. So no rape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I think that's I think that's my my favorite part of the show as well because it's the only thing that happens. Yeah. Um, not to take away from the moment because it is a. It's a, it's a cool one. I re yeah. I really like the uh, just from a from a writing and story perspective. I really like the uh, wildlings and the what or the uh, night's watch and all that stuff. That whole dynamic is really really cool. I think I agree. Uh, yeah, I think it's one of the better told where you're never really sure how to feel at any given moment yeah. about what's going on. It's it's it, it's a thanker. Although that arc did have my least favorite moment of the show as well in this episode, which is the seemingly meaningless conversation, short-lived as it was, between Melisandre and Jon Snow, where they're riding the elevator to the tippy top of the wall, and she just looks at him and goes, are you a virgin? <laughs> and he goes, he, he takes his time brooding, wipes his hair out of his eyes. No. Good. <laughs> Then that's it. We don't know what it was about. We don't nothing, <laughs> n- nothing happens in the episode because of that. It, it's not brought up. Uh, seemingly just out of nowhere, she was just curious. It's just it's curious. a Monday morning conversation. Yeah. Hey, how are we doing? <laughs> are you a virgin? No, are you? Of course not. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> keep going up. up keep up we go. Keep on that winch, boy. <laughs> <laughs> just goes just goes to show you, elevator conversations are awkward no matter where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was the maybe that was the little joke there. Either way, I didn't uh, I didn't care for it. Jeremy, your your best worst moments. Um, so the best for me was again the wall, uh, the man's conversation, mm-hmm. kind of the respect. Uh, I liked it in the sense that. Mance really, you know, they talk about honor a lot in the show, uh, kind of following oaths, um, you know, and I feel like he shows John what it means to have have been a king, right? He's kind of showing John, like, look, you are, you're going to be a leader here. I want you to understand, like, this is not about anything more than just me showing my people the right way of doing something. And mm-hmm. I have, I have got them to follow me. I swore all these things and I am not now just because it's convenient, even if it's going to protect my people, you know, I can't bend the knee that that's, that goes against everything I've done. So that's the best part of the show. Like, that's the only part of this episode um, that I thought was, you know, worth actually including. Um, and then the worst part for me uh, I I don't like the veil stuff. Um, the little finger and Sansa thing. Yeah, it's important to understand that you know uh, he's continuing to manipulate that game. You know, he's kind of misdirection says he's going in one place where we know he actually is intending on taking her uh, mm-hmm. off to meet another one of his goals. Uh, but the whole veil, uh, it, it's just creepy still to me. So I yeah. I didn't enjoy it as much. Although the 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 comment that uh, what's his name Robin uh, swings things like a girl with palsy or or, <laughs> or something yeah. it's something like that or oh my God. swings like a girl that 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 was a good chuckle so I, I give <laughs> I give him credit for that and he did yeah. I mean, that that actor kills that scene I think Sansa just needs like uh you know uh, 
one of those like bull nose ring things and some gauges now that she's she's going all yeah. heavy heavy metal heavy with metal the, she, yeah she dye, is in dyeing her hair black full you don't know me mom mode it's a little late to rebel against your parents after they've both been murdered but yeah. you know what i don't want to take this moment away from her so yeah um I think someone's going to do that in short enough time. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. She's and she's so. doing the whole, like, to Lord Bailey, she's doing the, you're not my real dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not my real uncle. You know, the um, the dragon scene when Danny goes down there and they're pissed off because she has, quote, unquote, locked them up. Like, I have more comments about it in the future, but it, it are, they, are they feeding them? Like, are they just leaving? Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're feeding them, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's just kind of like it's a weird thing, right? It's like yeah. how I had no how do you feed a dragon scene. like that? Just like some. Well, I think you probably just throw chuck food, chuck in. shit in there. Yeah. yeah, but I had no problem with this scene except when we consider the future. Now that we know what happens and the fact that she very much just does go down there and interact with them later, yeah. with no explanation as yeah. to why it's different. That's I don't what, get it. That's exactly my point. It, it just yeah, seems that was like, my... like they just forgive. Oh, just kidding, mom. We're cool. Yeah. Okay. Which, to be fair, you put, you know, this is me, the single man without any offspring. You put a kid on timeout, the first couple minutes, they're upset, they're, you know, standing tall. <laughs> Ten minutes later, maybe that's not the case. You've it's broken true. their spirits. You've broken their spirits. <laughs> put them in their place. So, who knows? So, um, are we just saying that we... We should just chain our children in the basement when they're acting. Yeah, terrible. yeah, you should. Okay, yeah. okay. Just, I don't have your children. I don't have any kids either. I just want to be prepared when the day Prepare comes. Prepare for that parenting. Yeah, Precisely. Yeah. Uh, also, let's see. Uh, we get to see, we saw a little bit of him in season two, but now becoming a bit more prominent of a character in this episode and the next. Uh, Kevin Lannister, spelled K E V. A N just to be different. <clears throat> uh, of course, Tywin's brother, and uh, he'll he'll come to be a a little bit of a player. And his son, Lancel, is back in the fold. And pious A F. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. This was gonna be my least favorite part, just because I just I don't like the Sparrow whole plot line in general. But really, I don't isn't, think there's anything wrong with the, the scene. I just uh, just not a big fan of that. So. The introduction yeah. of this of this just just made me a little unhappy. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah. Well, I want to make you happy, Hans. I don't want I don't want you to leave on a sourpuss note Please. here. So, we did have some good, bad, and jugglies. We did in this episode. Uh, we got to see some Miranese hooers. Hooers. Or I think a hooers. well, no, two two sets of Miranese boobs. One who was just kind of outside, hanging out, saying, hey, what's up? You can tell by my exposed boobs that this is a brothel. <laughs> and then after the uh, unsullied man in question walked into the brothel, he paid somebody to act like his topless mom and rock him to sleep. I mean, his throat ended up getting cut. But up until that point, she was doing a great job. Doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. And then also, and I think I touched on this a little bit on Saturday, lots of like perspective defying shots with uh loris and oliver and dario we have fully naked men uncovered by any garments and somehow we never get a penis no yeah we even really had, around I, it a lot and yeah, i feel yeah. like i feel bad because it's season five and i don't think i've ever actually called him by his name but oliver is our insert naked man here correct he is okay yes okay. So, uh, yeah, it, so it's not like we're seeing goods that hadn't been seen before. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know the hesitation there, but yeah. yes. Uh, but some, some nice butts, nonetheless, <coughs> I suppose. Uh, that's about it. That's everything I had on yeah, episode yeah. one. Not a great start. It was a no. slow episode. It was. But it's a... Uh... Potential. We see some development. I thought the introduction of um, oh, for the the Sons of Harpy, right? Yeah, that's good. That's a good storyline. So at least we get that because uh, Danny's story is picking up now. She kind of has been waxing and waning, and so when she's decided to settle and rule, you know, that kind of slowed things down again. And now she's getting the whole unhappy uh, people, and I think it's 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 good. 
So we have a couple just, code ones coming up. I kind of, for me, and I obviously know that they are they are different uh, in motives and, and tactics and all this, but I feel like, and this show does this a lot, how it, it kind of has, it will have very similar storylines running together um, from different perspectives and, and, and totally different sides of things. But I feel like the, the, in the whole like Sparrow storyline in uh, King's Landing kind of almost mirrors in a way that whole like sons of harpy is that yeah sons of harpy storyline in marine um mm. and like i said again tactics motives all that stuff groups very different but again just that kind of revolt or that uprising of this your brand new thing that we haven't been introduced to very very much yet kind of just like coming out of nowhere and i don't know it's fine Either. I some, uh, yeah, I think the Sons of the Harpy has an interesting storyline that takes turns I don't necessarily expect um, that I, I will certainly want to talk about once we start to flesh that out later in, uh, in, in the season. I think there are a couple interesting things to delve into there. For the time being, I would like to delve headfirst into a scump. I yeah. don't have one, so I guess I'll have to settle for this picture that we'll have up on uh, Instagram. And Jeremy, you can delve into it. What do you have for us today? Yeah, so chocolate chip scone from Rachel Bakery here locally. Um, really, uh, what I liked about it is it should be a chocolate chunk scone, right? So they're actually not chips. Doesn't that sound like a kid's show, like Ch- Rachel Bakery? Yeah. It's like, hey, hey. I'm Rachel Bakery. <laughs> Do We're you want to help something. me whisk this cream to stiff peaks? And you're like, oh, Does shit, it I make think you stiff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, the, that is all the time we have for uh, oh, this uh, Monday edition of Thrones Jesus and Christ. Scones. We will be back tomorrow to tackle what comic. will hopefully be a better uh, ep in Season 5, Episode 2, The House of Black and White. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thronesandscones.com in the meantime for all the goodies you want and uh, all the links to all the dang things. And until then, are you down with G-O-T? Yeah, Yeah, you you know know me. me. So now, for someone who has seen all of Game of Thrones and will most likely see the new season prior to even cracking that bind... Is it worth oh, the reading book. the books now? Yeah. Yeah, the I, books think, are so, I think the books are so good. So I very much, I watched the first two seasons before reading the first two books and didn't feel out anything. There are moments that I'm glad that I read first, like The Red Wedding. Um, and there are a couple moments that I can tell are in the books, like the Hodor reveal, uh, that I wish I would have read first. But I think absolutely um, they're so much worth reading. And the fact that they have come out and said... Whether this is a red herring or not, and I know that that's a theory, um, but they they have said that the endings are going to be different. Yeah, is is the main man writing the re- helping write the rest of the show? Is he still a consultant? I th- I think he's probably involved, but I don't think he's a producer, and I don't think he has been for a couple seasons now. Okay, I kind of knew that the 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 writing staff had shifted, but I wasn't sure if he was still like in and out. I, yeah, I don't believe so okay i know that uh david and db weiss know the ending of the books right really yeah i because th- i think they've known that from the get-go if Very i'm not mistaken it was basically like revealed because <laughs> the whole thing is people are paranoid about george rr R. martin dying <laughs> before yes. the books finished and he's, he's not that old no, like <laughs> no it's not a very nice thing to speculate on, but it's really not. Um, I mean, he doesn't look like the healthiest of men, but age isn't going to do him in. That's for sure. True. Yeah, no, at least not at the moment. And plus, you got to imagine that like any deity that may exist is a huge fan and wants to see where the series is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at no this kidding. point, it's a global phenomenon. No kidding. So well, he'll he'll yeah. let him finish. I think so. Did Maybe that's his his ultimate plan. Is he's assuming that, and he's like, "I'm just going to put writing these last two books off for hundreds of years so that I can be immortal." <laughs> immortal. Now, Hans, you read The Martian, right? Yes. I and did. you watched mm. the movie. Yeah, I watched the movie first. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. did you like the book? Yeah, definitely. Do you but think no, the book was better than the movie? Great. Yes, it is. Hell yeah! Movie. I mean, that's that's my argument. Pretty. I I can't tell you a movie that's based on a book that has ever been better so 
Uh, oh, I just thought I was just having this conversation the other day that I very much did have uh, one that was better than a book. Has it, have you guys read the Lord Fuck. of the Rings series? Yes. The books? Uh, not, not to completion. I've read The Hobbit and like The Fellowship, but I... Oh, I think the Lord of the Ring books are great and Lord of the Ring movies are good. I do love the movies. I think the movies are pretty great. Uh, uh, well, I, I haven't seen I, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the Hobbit movies, so I can't say all of them. But the actual titled Lord of the Rings movies mm-hmm. are, are are pretty dang good. There's mm-hmm. you know I was thinking about this the other day too. Getting uh, speaking of Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, oh, this this kind of whole fantasy genre, and even if you want to loop it into like medieval fantasy genre, um, there's really not a lot out there. You would think there would be more, but I was uh, there's really not. It's just, I think a lot of it falls into the trope of being too similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's hard to, it's hard to set yourself apart and get off the ground. Like people think of, of fantasy and it's like, oh, okay, it's Lord of the Rings. Or it's like, oh, if it's brutal, it's, you know, it, it's Game of Thrones. Um, whereas I think like to go on a similar tangent, like sci-fi can be so broad. Like sci-fi can mean anything from 10 years in the future to, you know, full on Star Trek, Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think that's a good point. I guess, I guess from my standpoint is it's just like, there's so many stories written in similar genres in other, in other genres mm -hmm. that it's like, I, I just, I wonder why there isn't more stories in that, world in a world in a medieval fantasy world in a world, that, <laughs> in a world. but in a medieval fantasy world or a fantasy world whatever you want to call it and then but just tell a different tell different stories you know because i mean again it's pretty much all based off of like D D crap anyway yeah if you yeah. ever get a chance to i mean if you really want to know something similar but i would say probably better written um if you ever read brandon sanderson Brandon yeah, Sanderson. See, I couldn't, I couldn't get into the storm. Is Stormlight Archive? Yeah, I love it. I couldn't it. get into it. I I read maybe three quarters of the first book, and maybe I need to give it another shake. But I, it didn't click with me. The he also does the Mistborn series, which is really similar, which is kind of Harry Potter with some medieval time period as well. Um, hmm. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think. Uh, George Martin has done all such storytelling and for a lot of us is always about creating a world that we can sense the world moving along with the story, right? Like that, you know, you have the sense that there's things are happening around you, even when you're not reading it in that sense. And I feel like yeah. he does such a good job of that, of giving you that sensation of you're like, Oh, I'm learning this, but because they're talking about this and this, and this is all during a festival. So all three of these things that are happening are all happening at the same time. And yet, while that's hard to imagine, he does it so well in the book. It just feels like you're watching the entire scene. Is, is, is the, so is the Miss Born, is that that? mashup of Jesus Jason Christ. Bourne and <laughs> and the 2007 thriller horror movie The Mist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I have seen that one. <laughs> Based on the books. <laughs> oh my god, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> uh, what, could, what, could, what, could, what could possibly stop this mist? <laughs> There's only one. <laughs> 